Hello traders, this is Blake Marr with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the week ahead video for June 16, 2024. You'll notice that I have the face show website up and running and in front of you. And that's just because if you don't listen to our daily shows, um, you're really missing out. Whether it's uh, you're listening to myself and the team on the face show or you're listening to the flow show in European hours, make sure you're listening in because so much is happening around the world. Uh, all throughout the week, especially this week, that you're gonna wanna be listening to these free shows that are available to you. Um, if you want more information, go to forexanalytics.com and, uh, and and click on where it says webinars and you can register for those, they're free. All right, I normally will take you right over to Forex Analytics, but I wanna show you something. For those of you that are Forex Analytics subscribers, you're gonna see a survey. Please take a moment and uh, and 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 do the survey. It'll take you just a couple of minutes. But once you complete that, you'll be entered to win for your time. You'll be entered to win a free twenty five thousand dollar assessment from the Trader Funding Program. Uh, upon completion, you'll be automatically registered. Um, I haven't, I have not, or we have not made a decision when we're going to do that uh, giveaway. But um, we'll notify you here in the next week or so. But make sure you take that survey, uh, and you can you can actually click. You know, you can set a reminder for for it to come back the next day. But I just want to urge you all, please. Um, we want to hear what you have to say about Forex Analytics, the community, our platform the different tools, things you'd like to see, things you'd rather not see, things like that. Okay, um, this is gonna be a very busy week and I uh, I think it's gonna be a very busy week because we have several central banks that are meeting this week. We have um, uh, the RBA, we have the Norge Central Bank, Swiss National Bank, Bank of England. Uh, I do think that the Bank of England could provide, even though no one's expecting them to, uh, to, to move because of the political environment that uh, the UK is in, there's a lot of UK data coming out, which could, you know, kind of alter the 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 you know um, the the verbiage coming out of the Bank of England uh, later on this week. So anyway, there there could be some activity there. Plus the cables and breakdown territory. I'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, also, I wanted to talk about really quick. I want to talk about global yields, and I'm not gonna. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to do it here. Actually, I'm not going to do it on Forex Analytics because um, we don't have that data to, to pull up all the bond market data, but I can do it here. I want to show you guys something. You know, last week was really crazy, obviously. Um, I'm, I, I will talk about the CPI, PPI, and FOMC here in just a second, but I want to talk to you, talk to you what happened with like French yields because of the election, um, the, the par European parliamentary elections last week and the pressure that's been on on um on on French and you can see them right here. Look at the look at the daily dailies. You know the the French uh, bond market versus like let's just match it up to um, what's what you're seeing in Germany. So let me uh, let me do this. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna make this chart a line chart because I'm gonna show you the divergence and and the spread that's blown out between them and uh, France and Germany. So let's go to uh, DE ten. Here you go, and look at this. Okay, you can see, and let's go intro. Let's go to a four-hour chart. You can see how those spreads have really blown out, um, and you've seen that. That means German bonds are well bid uh, above, you know, French uh, bonds or notes rather, the ten-year. So that means that um, investors are looking to other uh, other countries to buy their debt over French debt. And so with that, and that's the, the the move in the bond market globally has been really crazy this week, but looking what's happening in, you know, the European the European um, uh, debt market and and the spreads that are blowing out there is really very interesting and it's something that we have to keep in mind as uh, the weeks uh, move ahead and we we move towards a, a French the French snap election that was announced. So Anyway, it's it's going to be something a sight to behold. I think it's something that everybody's got to have one eye on at least uh, all, at all times. Let me get rid of this really quick. Um, I'm going to delete that, and I want to go back to uh, what's happening in the U.S. Let's go over to our charts that we use here every week. Let's go to the week ahead, and let me put that back on a, a candlestick, and then we're going to go to the dollar index, and let's talk about the dollar really quick because. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I want to talk technicals with you a little here, but more importantly, I want to talk to you about the reaction that you've seen 
following the CPI and PPI and FOMC this week. You know, when I when you look at the CPI and the producer prices data, and we can we can do that right here on Forex Analytics. And let me just take you over to Wednesday. You see the CPI data over here, you know, miss across the board. Go over to Thursday's producer prices. Very weak. Oh, whoops, that was CPI. Uh, producer price. There we go. Thursday. Um, you can see producer prices weak. Initial jobless claims jumped, and that was a that was a pretty significant jump. You see all this data that came out that was really weak in the U.S. But what did the dollar do? The dollar said. I don't care. Uh, the dollar came down from CPI and then that reversal happened following the FOMC and following the producer prices on Thursday, it continued higher. Why is that? That's because the FOMC was, you know, I, I walked away thinking, I, you know, the Fed's nowhere near um, cutting rates. That's the way I, I looked at it. When, when the Fed chair basically said, um, yeah, that, the CPI data was nice, but we're going to have to see a lot more of that, or you know, much more, uh, much more good data to to provoke them to basically cut rates. That set my expectations. Plus, on on top of the dot plots, that the Fed's not going to be cutting rates anytime in the near future, and that strengthened the dollar. That on top of European issues too, you know, European political issues, since Europe, uh, the euro makes up uh, you know fifty six, fifty seven percent of the, the dollar index, it's hard to contain the dollar when you have a Fed that's hawkish and then you have a, a central bank, uh, or a, excuse me, a, a, the Eurozone um, really in, in somewhat turmoil. So the question you might be asking me right now, will the dollar continue higher? It's to be seen, but I think the narrative, if you were looking for dollar weakness uh, a couple of weeks ago, which I was one of them, because I was just trying to argue in my mind, how are we going to get dollar weakness? And I was trying to come up with how how that would actually look, you know, going and you remember from a couple of weeks ago, going back to the, uh, the the dot com bubble and showing you that stocks came down, the dollar came down um, and, and a lot of it had to do with rates coming down at that point. But if stocks do uh, start to come down, is that going to give the dollar a bid? Oh, you know, and you look around at, at how the dollars, do, how the U.S. is doing against other countries. It's hard to fight the dollar at this point. So will the dollar break out? I think we're at risk of it. And, um, you know, you look technically and let's go over to a four hour chart and just, you know, look at that triangle that's developed here. You can you can make this one a, um, a dotted or dashed or whatever I have. I, I guess I have dotted. So you can you can have that as a dotted line. You can kind of see the triangle we're we're really dealing with. You know there are risks now that the dollar actually breaks higher at this point, and the euro trades back below 106, and that would take us back to 105, uh, especially in light of everything else that's happening. But if you guys are dollar bears and you think the dollar is going to pivot, I've got some something to to show you in a little bit. So make sure you all stick around. Stick around. Um, all right, we're going to start moving through the calendar of this next week and go through all the things that um, are happening this week and, and their respective charts, show you show you what, you know how, how I'm looking at the markets and how they're setting up. Plus, we have Nick uh, from Trading Analytics. He's going to be giving us an update on the S&P. Um, he looks at the equal weighted index. He looks at Apple and NVIDIA and some of these individual stocks. So make sure you stick around for that. And remember, this is a long video. It, it, if you watched it, a couple hours after it's been out, it is chaptered, so you can go across the bottom and get to the points that you, the key points you wanna you wanna hit. And if you find these videos beneficial uh, every week, you know for the last seven eight years, make sure you give us a thumbs up, give the team a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below. It's free to subscribe. You just hit the subscribe button. This way you'll be notified. Uh, well, actually, you hit the bell icon next to that, and you'll be notified on your mobile device, on your desktop, when these uh, week ahead videos come out. So make sure you do that. And like I said, um, you know, thumbs up and, and comment down below. I, I, I don't, I, I try to cover everything. I try to get every detail, but uh, you know, sometimes I miss them. So uh, so please, if I, if I miss something, jump down below and let me know. Um, 
let's talk about this week and let's talk about some of the important things that are happening. Uh, well, let's go through the calendar. So first of all, on Sunday, and let me let me get rid of my myself here real quick. So on Sunday, we have uh, China Industrial Production and Retail Sales. So that's going to come in Sunday night. Uh, Monday is Empire State Manufacturing, uh, and that I, I, I can't imagine it's going to be a huge uh, mover for the dollar. But uh, in case that data comes in strong, you know, you're looking at the dollar index. Let's, let me just pull, put up put out a couple, show you a couple of key developments here uh, while we're looking at the dollar index itself. Now you'll notice, and let's go intraday. We stopped. This is the this is the fall following CPI. We stopped at the 127% extension. If the dollar continues higher from here, it's going to continue towards the 161% extension of this move, right? There's the top, there's the bottom. The 161% extension comes in there. Why why else is that important? Well, that's also you might notice here it is the 88% retracement of basically this move. You know, that that move lower, that's the 88% retracement. That would be the bear's last line of defense. Well, they actually have one more line of defense because if you zoom out, that is the triangle resistance. So what is that telling you this week? Well, it's telling you if the dollar breaks 106, uh, you know, let, let me make sure I'm clear here. If it breaks 106 and a quarter, the dollar's probably going a lot higher. That would be the equivalent of the euro breaking through 106.25 and the euro heading towards 105. If we break through here, this is entirely possible. You know, I I sit there and I look at what's happening in the eurozone and it, it obviously it was way more aggressive than the 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 voting was way more right leaning than I think the whole market expected, myself included. And I'll tell you how I traded the euro because that will be part of, you know, last week's setups. Um, but it's a little scary. When I when I say that, it it, it it's a little scary, you know, not just from a political point of view, but how it could disrupt the eurozone and how we could see, you know, a much weaker euro because of this, you know, disruption in the uh, weeks and months ahead. And that's why I think the risk is now tilted towards, hey, maybe the dollar actually breaks out instead of breaks down. But you know, we are in, and um, this is a, a point that Jim Welsh made when I was talking to him yesterday about the about triangles, and it's something that I tell our traders. Um, when we talk about triangle patterns, it, it they are messy. And when you look at it, I mean, you're in the middle, you're in the apex of of this uh, of this triangle, right? And th it becomes very whippy. That's the nature of a triangle. You whip back and forth and back and forth on headlines, and then all of a sudden, you know, whether it's here, you break out, or whether it's there, you break down, or you know, extend that out a couple of months before it actually happens. When the breakout occurs. That you get like that spring loaded effect. Imagine a spring that's been compressed from both ends and then the tension is so great that when you when you release it, it you know springs up or springs down in, in you know aggressively. That's why triangle patterns are wonderful. They're wonderful because the breakouts tend to follow through. And then you know that you know if something breaks out, you're not gonna get caught in some sort of false breakout. The the chances of that happening become quite less. And the explosive nature of of breakouts are are really good now. So I, I I'm glad that we get to at least meet here once a week because I will tell you when it happens that it is happening, and that's the that's the good news about at least seeing me every day. But if you want to be uh, up to speed every single or once a week, but if you want to be up to speed every single day, listen to the face show, listen to the uh, the more, the um, the flow show, and we'll keep you abreast of what's happening and why. Um, so anyway, there's the dollar index. That's something that, again, we I think we need to be focusing on in the days ahead. Now, also, uh, continuing on, uh, Monday night, we have the RBA decision. So let's take a look at the Aussie dollar and just realize that the Aussie dollar continues to, 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 to ramp up towards this major resistance as it did this week and pull back. All right. So that resistance at you know, obviously 67 cents is so critical because it is a major trend line that has been in basically intact since post COVID lockdown. There's your COVID lockdown. The high following that, we follow this trend line all the way down. A lot of people believe that commodities are in a, in a, in a bullish, we're in a bu bullish commodity cycle. Should it reflect in the Aussie dollar since the Australian currency is, is considered a commodity currency? It's possible, 
And, and uh, you know, one of the things that we're going to be looking for, uh, you know, since we're up, we're in this really tight range, is this week we have the RBA. You know, inflation in, in, uh, in Australia has been somewhat sticky, but growth prospects don't look as great uh, as, a, as a country. So there aren't going to be any, there's probably going to be no change, but we're going to be looking for clues on how the RBA is going to approach this. I'm, I'm going to take this support zone. You can see it right here. I'm going to move it for you. And why am I going to move it to here? Well, it's real simple. Because that support zone really now illustrates the 38% retracement of this entire move up. So what that actually means is a break below uh, 6575 or 6580 would be really quite bearish and then a move above you know obviously this resistance is going to be really quite bullish so here's the but here's the other thing that I want to I want to talk about since you know you think about not only what's happening in price and what's happening around the globe but when is it happening so the RBA is happening right at the beginning of the week it literally is on well to it's uh, Monday night or Tuesday morning if you're in Australia, and unless something crazy happens on on uh, on Monday, chances are we're going to be in the lower band here of this range when the RBA meets. There's a good chance of that, so that means the risk is actually elevated that we have a breakdown versus a breakout just because if the RBA comes out and they just happen to be way more dovish and they start leading us down the road that 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 another rate, a rate cut is coming, then you're gonna see the Aussie actually break down. And then you're gonna start looking at this as being the downtrend is intact. So again, really critical support here, but more importantly, it's because that RBA decision is so early in the week, I think the risk could be for a potential breakdown. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I just think you need to be on guard for it. All right, moving right along on Tuesday, we have U.S. retail sales, industrial production. Um, Wednesday early morning, I want you to show, show you this. Now, I don't think the South African, uh, obviously, we had these elections. So I'm going to I'm actually going to delete this. It's very it's really messy right now. Uh, uh, we you know got through the elections, hoping hoping there was going to be something more, uh, you know, exciting happening. But now it you know here's here's south africa right i'm zoomed out about as far as i can go on a four-hour chart so let's go on a daily chart uh we have south africa inflation data coming out now that will be on like i said it's going to be wednesday morning um and uh just the the reason why i want i want you guys to focus on this is because we're so close what i consider pretty you know darn close to support which would be a symmetrical triangle in a very very big uptrend and and the market is expecting inflation to tick higher both month over month and year over year now on the core data it's expected to stay same but the the, the headline number is supposed to be ticking up by one tenth of a percent month over month year over year it'll, it'll be two tenths of a percent that's what expectations are so if inflation comes in 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 line with expectations we might you know just end up being supported around here but if it comes in a little weak you know we could end up you know moving our way you know back into the middle of this triangle so just keep an eye on south south africa as we get into uh midweek on the the most important data coming out midweek and i'm i'm actually going to stop here for a second is um uh, is what's happening in the uk uh, we have uh, we have uk cpi which will be on wednesday so i want to talk about sterling for a second i also have to mention this i i forget about it because it's a it's a newer holiday in the us um uh, it is also a bank holiday uh, on wednesday it's juneteenth um it, it's uh, it's the, the holiday recognize, um, you know, the end of slavery here in the U.S. So, like I said, it's a relatively new holiday in the U.S., but it is a bank holiday. So liquidity is going to be a little bit um, less. I haven't made a decision if we're going to have like a face show on Wednesday. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. I'd like to see how the week develops. So if you are a Forex Analytics subscriber, just 
stand by. Please be patient. We'll, we'll kind of play it by ear. And, uh, you know, I can always cancel the show um, since it's a bank holiday, but throw you an audible and uh, ignite up the show, especially if we're getting some volatility. So we can always do that too. We'll see. We'll see as, as we go. All right. Anyway, back to the sterling. Uh, we have UK inflation, but more importantly is on Thursday, we have the Bank of England decision. And then on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, we have UK retail sales. So it's, it's a busy week of UK data, but the breakdown that you're seeing in sterling should not be ignored because we have an ascending wedge that was broke or ascending wedge, excuse me, ascending channel that was broken. We have a false breakout above this trend line resistance. And you guys know my saying here, so I'm just going to say it. False breakouts lead to breakdowns. So we had a false breakout. We talked about it on the face show in the middle of the week. And I'm like, we had a false breakout, so we should break down. And we did at the very end of the week, we move lower. Now, right at this point in time, uh, I believe here, let's, let's, let me change this really quick. You'll notice this is actually the 38% retracement of the last leg higher. Let me move this over. Okay. So the last leg higher, there you go. I'm sorry. It's the 50% retracement is the 50% retracement held of this entire move. So reason why I point that out is because if you breach it, if you break the 126.50 level, that's probably going to open up some downside. Now, you know, I know we're talking about CPI, but the reason why CPI is so important because on Thursday, we have a Bank of England rate decision, not expecting the market to change or uh, the, the BOV, BOE to change any type of policy because they're not going to want to look political, not in this current environment. At least I don't think so. Uh, but the U, UK CPI that's coming out on Wednesday could change this narrative just a bit because right now um, the market has a 40% chance of a cut priced in for August. So, and, 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 and a 25 and, and a cut isn't fully priced in until November. So if inflation data continues to drop in the UK, maybe that, you know, speeds up expectations or uh, bolsters those expectations a little bit for a cut, maybe not to come sooner, but more handedly that they will indeed deliver a cut. So you, you can still see a move in the sterling and obviously it can go the other direction too but you can still see a move in the sterling this week despite the bank of england not expecting to to move on rates so that's that's the point i wanted to make out uh uh point i wanted to make and then also don't forget on uh, friday we have uk retail sales as well which could uh, could also influence the market too all right moving right along uh we can go into uh wednesday night we have New Zealand GDP. Now, one of the big issues that I've seen with the Kiwi, uh, let's delete this for a second and let's do some drawing. I haven't, I haven't drawn on the Kiwi for a while, like, uh, you know, uh, done much artwork. You were going to say chart work, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to call it artwork. So we haven't done a lot of chart work for the Kiwi as of late, but what you're going to notice is we've had, well, this is, this is a weekly chart. So we had a rejection of a major descending trend line and obviously horizontal resistance, which also coincides with a 618 retracement of this move, right? Um, and so as a result of this, you know, as a result that we're stalling below the 618, we're stalling below this, uh, this, this trend line that you see right here. And I'm gonna have to draw that a little bit better. Okay, it's like that, right? So we're stalling at horizontal resistance, that's key. 618 retracement, major trend line. We, we should be a little bit more defensive with the Kiwi right now, especially looking at how the dollar has been responding against other currencies. So what I would be looking at right now is the support being 6080. Now 6080, uh, if, if you listen to or, or uh, you know watch Forex analytics every day, every day we put together this bias chart. This bias chart I've been doing, and uh, this is not ex an exagger exaggeration, I have been using a bias chart or what we used to call a T chart back in 1997 is how I first learned how to trade 
is to do this type of work. So, you know, you're talking for me almost 30 years, nearly three decades of me doing this work, not only for myself, but, you know, for the last 20 years, I've been delivering this, this data every single day to our clients here at Forex Analytics, or if you even go before that at the Wise Trade Group, and people live and die by this piece of data that you see here. It's it's located in the Forex Analytics community. And if you listen to the Morning Edge show, we go through all of these instruments every single day and put up this and put together this bias chart. But what you'll notice is 6080 has an asterisk next to it. So why would you think it has an asterisk next to it or a double asterisk in this case? It, it tells you that how important this support is. Not only is it a support zone that you and I are, have been discussing here on the week ahead video, but you also notice it's a 38% retracement and you'll notice when I say, when I do this, it's a 38% retracement, very strong horizontal support. The reason why that's so imperative is because if that breaks for whatever reason, whether it's the New Zealand GDP that actually uh, does it, if that breaks, I think there's going to be an usher of, uh, there's going to be a bit of uh, selling below that, that level right there. Obviously, if you get above resistance, there's going to be a lot of buying coming this direction. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if, if uh, New Zealand GDP is going to come in better than expected or worse than expected, but the best thing you can be is prepared for either situation, being able to take action in either direction, because I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a palm reader. I'm definitely not an economist that works at the Fed or any other central bank because they don't know. Palm readers don't know. Fortune tellers don't know. Look, we just have to be prepared for what might come our way. And in this case, you know exactly where your breakout points are. And that's, that's as a trader, that's all we can really ask for. All right, moving into Thursday. Now, we have uh, we talked about the Bank of England, obviously, uh, but we also have the Norges Central Bank. Um, no one's expecting them to change on interest rates they have had some rising um you know wage pressures so you know it's the the, the thing about the dollar in norway is it's fallen quite precipitously right into support you can see it's whether we're following this channel or whether we have this longer term triangle we're right at support so um the, i don't think there's going to be any cries for a rate hike but um you, you never know. I mean, and, and, you know, especially, like I said, they, they've had really strong wage pressure. So what I'd be looking for a couple of different levels here in the U S dollar Norwegian Krona, for those of you that traded, which I do 1080, which is the 50% retracement of this entire move. You can see how we, we, we are finding sellers ahead of that 1080 level or this rising trend line or triangle support that basically comes in at these lows. So the other level you need to be looking out for would be right here. Uh, right there, okay? And that is gonna be at 1042. Again, like the like the Kiwi, we know what to do in either situation. Now it's being patient and waiting for one of those two levels to break. Swiss National Bank, also on Thursday. Now here's, let's talk about the Swiss National Bank for a second, and let's talk about the Swiss Franc. So, you know, obviously, I've, I've drew this out a couple of weeks back. I said, hey, a breakdown through here is going to give us, you know, potentially a setup for a head and shoulder pattern, right? Something like this or like that. And matter of fact, let's, let's, uh, let's get a little bit more, let's get a little bit more um, specific with our analysis here. Okay. So you have your 78% retracement right there. You have your 618 retracement right there. We are now making our way lower. So they're not expected to um, deliver another surprise cut like last time. Um, but if we walk away w with the idea this week that in September there's not going to be a rate cut, the, the, the risk is the Swiss continues to strengthen quite dramatically. Now, one of the reasons why the Swiss franc is, 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 is rising quite dramatically are the, I showed you what's happening, uh, the, the, the blowout between French and, and German yields, right? So you're getting this rush to safety in Swiss francs and that could continue this week. Uh, the, the Swiss national bank needs to hint 
that there might be another rate cut because if they don't, the risk is the Swiss is going to strength quite dramatically. And that's something that I believe Jordan is not really too comfortable with. So this is going to be a really tricky uh, 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 interest rate decision. Look at what's happening in the Euro Swiss. If, if you guys are not you know, watching this, um, let me see, I'll, I'll pull it up right here. Look at the Euro Swiss and, and I was trying to pick this thing up you know, as, as it was hitting 97 cents. I got out of it, um, managed to take a very small loss on the way down. And then, you know, look at this move. I, I, now I had to believe that the Euro Swiss is a buy somewhere down here, but it's hard to do that in this political environment that we're dealing with. And it's hard to do that, especially if the Swiss National Bank doesn't have your back. So this is gonna be kind of an important rate decision, but let's just go back to the to the Swissy and and realize that you know this is the 200 DMA. You see it? It's I mean it's pretty apparent. That's your 200 DMA. A break below that level is going to open up some downside this week, and then you're gonna be you're gonna be in a race to um, you know which which is the which is the uh, you know. Uh, who's the strongest currency out there? You know, is it the dollar or is it the Swiss franc? I mean, the Swiss franc looks so strong as of this week, thanks to what has happened in Europe. And it probably will continue to strengthen as well. Now, um, on Thursday, we, we do have Mexican retail sales. I'm going to cover the peso uh, when we go over our review uh, trade, the setups from last week, I'll go into the peso, so don't worry about that. Uh, we've got also on Thursday, we have unemployment claims, we have Philly Fed, and then um, Thursday night, oh, uh, Thursday night, we have Japan's core, uh, uh, national core CPI. Now, I'm gonna do something for you guys really fast. Let me let me do this. Um, whoops, that's, uh, let's, uh, tr -tr 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 pull that up. And this is a chart. You guys have heard me talk about the Wyckoff uh, accumulation pattern. Well, I'm going to do this. And this is the charts that we've had here. Um, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the yen. And I'm, I want to show you why I think this is developing. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the Wyckoff. And you've heard me talk about the Wyckoff over the last couple of weeks because of the Mexican peso. You're gonna hear me talk about the Wyckoff this week because of the Japanese yen. Now, you might ask me, well, hey, Blake, uh, why haven't you talked about the Wyckoff pattern you know, before? Uh, well, just to answer your question, I do, and I have, but usually during just the daily shows. Why am I making a stink about it right now? Well, first of all, accumulation or distribution strategies are usually you know, found at the very top of very bullish trends or at the bottom of very bearish trends. In the dollar Mexican peso the last couple of weeks, we had a very bearish trend for three some odd years and we had a Mexican um, election and that accumulation ended up happening. So we got this, this happened, right? This is our Wyckoff from last week. We saw the, the move transpire to the upside and that accumulation pattern was right there. And I walked you through all the reasons why it was. Now this week's a little bit different because we've been in this strong uptrend in the dollar yen, but more importantly, what happened with the BOJ this week? Well, first of all, they didn't, they didn't do anything. Uh, and that was, and they left their, their, their JGG, JGB bond purchases, uh, or, you know, they, they, they basically kept it the same, uh, kept it the same amount um, of they, their reduction, excuse me, they kept it the same amount as previous. So they didn't adjust it and the market was hoping they would and the dollar yen spiked up. Well, I thought I was gonna get up in the morning um, following, I guess it would have been Friday morning after staying up late on Thursday with the Forex analytics community through, uh, through the BOJ. I thought I was gonna wake up in the morning and the dollar yen was gonna be trading closer to the 160, but it didn't. What, what happened is we spiked up and then we turned around. Why did we turn around? It's because global yield started to fall. And Ueda said a couple of things that, uh, you know, Cayman had explained that Ueda um, uh, made some comments about, you know, bond buying and how that might adjust. 
uh, he was telling us the next morning because he was awake during the during the whole situation doing the flow show. But we saw a really stark or big reversal, which if you're looking at a Wyckoff, it's we call that a failed rally attempt. It's this this point right over here, right? So when you get a failed rally attempt, the risk now is increased. And you guys, you guys hear me say this all the time. False breakouts usually lead to, yeah, you said it, I didn't. Um, so that's why we have to be extra, extra on guard this week that we're not developing a Wyckoff distribution setup which you know if we break through 155 it turns bearish obviously and then this comes into play the very um the markdown effect if you will so in other words if this happens this week then you're going to see something that looks like that over the course of the next several weeks if this is a wyckoff distribution uh pattern which in my interpretation it pretty much is in in my view so as as and and this this right here is obviously the buying climax that was the buying climax intervention stopped it now we have um, the risk of of reversing here and so the dollar yen is really on my radar because we have national core cpi on thursday night not just because of that but for all the other reasons that i've just explained to you now on friday a couple other things that are happening we have uk retail sales uh uh as as i pointed out you know uh, when we were talking about the Bank of England, we also have your, this is the uh, Eurozone UK and US uh, PMI data is coming out. Remember uh, US exceptionalism, exceptionalism, it was so, such a big uh, theme for earlier this year and the end of last year in 2023. You know, that that narrative could shift a little bit. So we're going to everybody's going to be looking to see if, you know, if European and UK growth is stabilizing and the, the US is starting to weaken, we could see the dollar flip flop because of that. We also have Canadian retail sales to wrap us up for the week. And by the way, I'm not even going to look at the Canadian because kind of torn on, on how I feel about it at this moment. So I'm not not really doing anything with it. All right. Now, I, I also want to mention if you guys haven't you know, tried out Forex analytics, uh, you should do it. And the reason why you should do it, it's $1 for 10 days. You can have this really great tool. Download the mobile app. You'll get all the notifications when support resistance levels are breached, when new analysis have been up, uploaded in the markets, uh, that we, when we upload new analysis uh, like, like this and the Euro Yen, you'll get notified when that happens. And, uh, and you'll see exactly why it's such a big deal and where those key levels are. And then more importantly, you get to jump in the chat room. So if you click this icon right here, the one right next to your, uh, your name, if you'll be in the chat room and then you'll be able to have conversations not only with me, but with a lot of other traders around the markets and you can get you know a lot of news and research from here, different reports, uh, you know, different things that are happening, different, Fed speakers. You can go into the Flowonomics room, which is basically the macroeconomics chat room. Uh, you have the trades room where you can see what people are buying and selling, myself included. And that's not so you mirror my trades. No, you, you don't have to do that. I wouldn't want you to do that. But if I happen to be long the euro and you're getting short, you could always ask me in the chat room, say, hey, Blake, I noticed you're uh, shorting the euro. I just, I was getting long. So why are you doing that? And then I'll be more than happy to give you an answer. Those are the types of things that we do in the chat room where we support each other and we tell each other what we're doing. So this way you not, o not only have an idea of what other people are doing, but you can bounce ideas off of other people and maybe even find some great trading ideas. Because to be frank, I get a lot of my trading ideas right from the chat room because you have hundreds of sets of eyeballs looking at, at the market instead of just one set of eyeballs, right? So it's it's a having a community and trading community like this, very important. That's why check out uh, Forex Analytics, take, uh, take your $1 trial and make sure you download the mobile app because uh, we did get the alarms working. And then plus you'll get live squawk and all these other fun things, you know, you know, live charts, harmonic analysis, uh, you know, Elliott wave analysis on 30 different, pro uh, 30 different um, instruments. You know, not just currency related. Obviously, we're talking about boons and what's happening. What matter of fact, I'm going to actually talk about what's happening in in boons and what's happening in 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 bonds here in just a second. So, 
Let's talk about a few other markets really quick. Uh, gold, I want to say, is really, really very important support. We continue to monitor that uh, 2080. Nothing's really changed here. But I want to show you something that's really interesting. If you look at copper, we completed that bear flag pattern we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Came right down to uh, support, previous breakout point. That's also a 50% retracement. It's support. Uh, if copper starts breaking below 435 or so, I would be worried about global growth uh, as a whole. I think uh, if you if you saw this industrial metal come under pressure, that would signal that uh, an, uh, you know global economic weakness is upon us. So keep keep your eye on copper, crude. You know, crude's been extremely wild uh, and and unpredictable. I, I look at crude, and this is uh, one of those markets that. You know, we thought we'd get some sort of pivot here uh, last week. You know, if we break back above 76 and a quarter, we're going to break out. You know, if we if we reject, we're going to go back down. We obviously broke out to the upside, so that did happen. But the fact is, is that we're coming right up to the 200 DMA. And I, I don't know if I'd want to be long, you know, when you have the intersection of the 200. Here, let's move that over. The 200 DMA and the 50 DMA right above it. So, you know, risk reward might favor shorts but you know, something could change with opec uh or or supply we could see supply shocks or something that could alter this so just i think if you write down that the 200 dma and the 50 dma are good resistance right now that'll probably be sufficient uh the last thing i wanted to cover before we bring in nick from trading analytics is the bond market if you take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the 10 year really quick uh where is my 10 year there it is okay if you take a look at the 10 year we are approaching triangle resistance major resistance now there's a lot of people that do not believe that bonds can go higher too much supply u.s has too much debt their debt to gdp ratio is too high no one's going to buy u.s debt until something happens where the market all of, all of a sudden finds themselves distressed and they need something safe, why not, despite the, the debt to GDP ratio, it's you know no worse than a lot of different countries, why not just park some money in, in, uh, in, a, in a vehicle that will yield me decent money and keep me shielded from any type of stock market pullback? That would be the risk that the bond market rallies in a situation like that. And we're coming right up against tri triangle resistance. So what the reason why I'm showing you this is above 111 in the 10 year right here, that's the ZNs if you trade them. You know, like I, I trade the ZNs uh, when I choose to trade um, 10 year notes. I, I trade them through futures. So I'm always looking at, you know, this contract right here, uh, the continuous, but you know, we break above 111 and we're probably gonna go a lot higher. That means yields are going to fall. And if yields are falling, you know, the, your natural reaction might be, well, I, I should be selling dollars. But should you? You know, I don't know. You know, I, you, you could be selling dollars, but it depends if yields are dropping everywhere else too. So that's, that's the other thing. All right. Anyway, I just want to show you what important resistance this is. Now, we're going to take a moment, and I'm going to let actually Nick cover everything S&P and uh and and what's happening there and then when we come back we're going to do a, a, a review setup a review of last week's setups so come on in nick hello there everybody this is nick groves your host here with trading analytics blake thank you for a little bit of time here i'm just going to walk you guys through the equities really quick so um, S&P tried to break below some channel support today, but ended up rallying into the close, closing pretty much flat on the day. And you'll note that on the week, you'll see that the S&P closed up 1.59%, the NASDAQ up 4.77%. Um, it's getting a little bit crazy out there. So let's talk about in the event that we do continue higher. I know I pointed out to you guys last week that we're in a bull flag right now at the moment. And um, that bull flag does complete around 5,600. Another extension that I think is pretty important is going to be this 161% um, extension from the highs of January of 20, of December of 2021 to the lows of 2022 that comes in around 5642. So I think that if we're gonna continue higher, 
which is entirely possible uh, that that might occur. Where is support? Support's gonna be close to 5,400. You have pretty much a little bit of confluence of support. And then when you take a little bit of a step back, um, I think that by the time we get there, some support around 5,316 or so uh, might act as support. You'll also note from this uh, low here in October of 2023 that we do have a 38.2 that comes in right near 52.55 if these highs hold. Now, I don't know if they will because when you take a look underneath the hood, look at things like the Dow Jones Transportation, it did not look all that great today. It broke below support, managed to close above it, but it's down on the week, I think one and a quarter percent or so. Um, the equal weighted S&P is not near all time highs like the rest of the market, like the uh, actual S&P, um, but the equal weighted broke down below support today, closed below support, tried to take out the lows from May, uh, but bounced from there. I think on a bounce back near 164 or so, you should find sellers there if this is going to continue to break down. Now let's talk about those stocks that really were driving the market this week. Let's got We have to take a look at Apple. Uh, Apple has been on an absolute tear. Um, I did. I was surprised to see how far it stretched. But when you take a look at the highs of December 2023 to the lows of April. Um, you'll note that we came right up near the 161% extension. Now, this trend line here that I'm showing you guys, if my trading view would load, uh, is, is very important. So if we end up closing back below 207, that would be a false breakout. So I know some of you might be uh, in Europe, or I'm sorry, trading FX in Europe, but uh, definitely alert up Apple at 207. Now, another one that was big was NVIDIA. And NVIDIA is getting awfully close to a 261% extension. At this rate, when, when you're moving like this, you're just starting to get to hold numbers and you run out of extensions, it's, a, it's an environment for caution. So just be careful out there. Um, but yeah, it, it looks pretty overdone for the most part. RSI did break this trend line, so it might have some room to go higher, but just err on the side of caution. And I'm going to help you with that on our Twitter, Trading Analytics. So um, if you want to follow us, it'd be greatly appreciated. And I hope you all have a great weekend. Thanks so much, Blake. All right, Nick, thank you so much. Really appreciate the, the views. And it's crazy what has happened with, uh, with Apple this week. And um, that 261% extension in NVIDIA definitely should be watched. So thanks for covering that. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to talk about um, the uh, setups from last week. So let's spend a few minutes. So first first setup of last week was the euro. And I said, um, I'm going to buy dips after the weekend, uh, the dips below the 200 DMA for an eventual break higher. Now, I didn't think the election was going to swing that far to the right. So I ended up getting long the euro. Uh, uh, I think it was like maybe my average was 107. 60 or 70 like that it came all the way down to the 161 percent extension and 618 retracement got pretty close to my stop but it bounced following the uh following the um the the cpi data the weak cpi allowed the euro to trade back up to a 108.50 i got out on the move back above 108 i took my profits off um so if you take if you mark from the you know from last week's video to this week's video uh you would have taken a loss but if you're actually trading it and listening to the shows you would have known that i got out i picked it up i was a little freaked out but i ended up getting out uh for for a profit and you know i've, I've been on the sidelines with uh with the euro since then so i'm gonna call it you know you, you can call it it didn't work from week to week but if you actually traded it you probably did okay all right like me so it's it's up to you whatever you want to say uh dollar max looking for a move down to my notes say 1780 to 18 and looking for an eventual break above uh 19 so we're still looking for that dip you know and has it happened not yet will it happen i think there's a good chance of it so the dollar dollar mix is is still above um, uh, still above eighteen fifty. It actually rallied to nineteen because I said it was going to eventually move to nineteen. It basically did. Uh, I am still looking for a dip though. So if you can find a dip back down towards eighteen, that might be the level. The problem is is it's actually holding on to its gains, and the longer we sit there and we hold on to our gains, the less likely there is for a dip. But I still think it you know hasn't transpired, but it's still a good setup if you want to keep it on your radar. Um, Pound New Zealand, buy dip back to 207.20. Uh, 
So I ended up buying the the uh, the pound New Zealand at two oh seven thirty, maybe I think. Oh, where is my pound New Zealand? I think it might be at the bottom. Yeah. So I bought it at like two oh seven thirty uh, early in the week. End up getting out of it for like a 20 pip loss as it just kind of floated around. But you can see how we bounced basically off of the trend line, which we were looking for. I just thought it, the dip would be a little bit more shallow. Um, the fact of the matter is it's still holding, you know. So if, you know, if you're still trading it, I'd be a little careful because we're approaching these trend lows right here. But if you look between, you know, last week and this week, no, it didn't work. And I actually took a little bit of a loss on this one. I think I bought it at, like I said, 107.40. And I think I got out at like 107.10 or 15. I just I ended up, you know, just kind of scratching it, if you will, taking a, a couple pip loss. But so I don't think this one would really worked out. So you can count the euro however you want. Pound New Zealand, you know, didn't it didn't work out. And the Mexican peso just hasn't developed yet, but I think it's still setting up. All right, the these these are going to be the three setups that I'm looking at this week. So for this week, the first one is higher volatility. Um, I think the VIX is making higher lows. Higher lows means that we're probably due for a higher period of volatility. And to take advantage of higher volatility, you guys got to check out the Trader Funding Program because you know if, if you're looking to trade and pass an assessment and then get access to larger amounts of capital and we have the most simple rules out there we don't have like two-step rules and you know different weird stuff it's very sensible risk management um, focused sets of rules you got to make 10 percent without losing more than six percent in a trailing basis sensible easy to understand rules without any time expiration but if you want to pass an assessment probably the best time to pass an assessment is when volatility is starting to move higher so right now we have volatility is is making higher lows which i think is going to be making higher highs so basically long vix setup number one setup number two um as i explained to you in the dollar yen it is now officially on my radar and I'm looking for a breakdown. Uh, well, first of all, uh, a couple things. Breakdown below the 50 DMA, but more importantly, below the channel support. So I already I already explained to you why this is gonna be a big one. If you didn't, if you just skipped right over to here, you better go back and look at the Wyckoff distribution, why I'm looking for it as a p potential short. It's on the radar, but I'm really looking for a move below 155, you know, before I'm convinced. Um, number three. IWM. So the IWM for a short, which is the Russell 2000. And uh, the reason why I want to show you that, let's pull up the IWM. Okay, we have broken an ascending channel. This is also a head and shoulder pattern. Wrong setup here. Give me a second. <laughs> it's a head and shoulder pattern. Here we go. There's, uh, there's your shoulder. There's your head, there's your other shoulder, there is your neckline right there, okay? So it's already broken an ascending trend line. It's very weak, um, that looks like a short. And I'm gonna give you a bonus one, so I'm gonna give you four. The bonus one would be short DAX because the DAX has officially broken its ascending channel. So let me find the German DAX. And why is it not on here? I'm not sure, but we're gonna do that right now. Let me delete all this stuff. And I'll just, I'm gonna make it real simple for you. Broke its ascending channel. It has broken at 618. So now you just wanna to look to sell rallies in the German DAX. So any bounce you can get, you sell into. That was your bonus. Number four trade set up for the week. So guys, gals, if you um, think this video is beneficial to you, you enjoyed it, you think it's gonna help you prepare for, for the week, then make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you say thank you to Nick Groves down below in the comments. His, his, his commentary is so valuable that I didn't even feel the need that I needed to go over the S&P with you. I think he did a great job. So thank you for spending your most valuable asset with me. 
which is your time. I appreciate you, and um, I thank you. I'll see you next week on The Face Show on Monday. You all have a great remainder of your weekend. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.